Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, as we let people join in the first few minutes, I'm going to do just a little bit of um, the singing crystal bowl just to get us in the mood. Thank you for being here. So if you've just joined us, welcome, welcome. Welcome from the Bay Area, Oakland, um, to Innovations to Wellness webinar on how to live your best self in this year of the Ox. I'm very excited to, to have you all here. Um, the recommendations in this presentation are meant to help you live your highest self, your highest good, reach towards your, your highest aspirations and to live a joyful life. Um, also to have balance, balance and harmony within your own selves as you experience this year and this transition into the Chinese New Year, uh, which we will talk about today. Um, I am Dr. Crystal Lynn Keeler, and I have a joint doctorate from Zhejiang Chinese Medical University in Hangzhou, China. Um, I received my doctorate of acupuncture and oriental medicine from five branches. Um, I received my Master of Science from Traditional Chinese Medicine at ACTCM in San Francisco. And I did my Master of Public Health at UC Berkeley in Berkeley, California. Um, so what I um, aspire to do today is to actually help uh, explain some of the Chinese medicine concepts about Year of the Metal Axe for you to help you have success in this year. Next slide, please. Uh, there are two brief disclaimers to talk about um, and uh, before we get started. And the first is that this information is for educational purposes only. If you do need medical advice, please seek out a medical professional for any personal medical questions you might have. And this webinar will be recorded. There aren't any video cams on your part, so you don't have to worry about what you look like. Um, but uh, joining the rest of the broadcast will um, signify your consent that you acknowledge it is being recorded. So we will cover a couple things today, um, like we talked about in the agenda, summarizing the qualities of your, the metal ox. We're going to also do a brief visioning exercise on what brings you joy, and then walk through a guided meditation. And there will be a couple little tiny meditations sprinkled throughout the, the talk today, and uh, we're going to actually start off with one. So this slide shows uh, one of my favorites, um, just a short little meditation, and we're gonna walk through it together to get ourselves in the mood for today. So get nice and comfortable on your chair. Hopefully you're warm. If you're not warm, get a cover. <laughs> Be easy in your body. Maybe wiggle about a little bit. Just get really nice and comfortable. And take a couple breaths into your lower abdomen. If you want to close your eyes, that's fine. If you don't want to close your eyes, that's also fine. Breathing in. I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. Dwelling in the present moment, I know this is a wonderful moment. So now as we get into today, I want to briefly tell you that you may want to have a piece of scratch paper and a pen for later. It's not necessary, but it's helpful if you want to have that for later, um, if you want to remember what we do here today. Um, next slide, please. So before diving into the very specific qualities relevant to Year of the Ox, I will first need to briefly explain 
two Chinese medical concepts to you, a little bit about them, just a, a very a cursory dive into yin-yang theory and five elements. So first of all, we talk about yin and yang, which is always a duality. There's, they're always talked about in relative terms, not in absolute terms. So when we talk about the sky and the earth, uh, the sky is more yang compared to the earth, which is more yin. But within the sky, there are more yang elements and more yin elements. So like a cloud, for example, is more yin, it's more condensed, it's more fluid and um, condensation. And the air around it is more yang in nature. Um, same with when we get to a body part. If we talk about the head, the head is more yang compared to the feet. The feet are more yin. However, like within the head, the top of the head is more yang compared to the chin. So always yin and yang are talked about in relative terms and they transition into each other. So we always have, say, for example, night changes into day, um, heat can change into cold, and that can happen within the body and outside the body. Uh, one of the really important concepts that we'll be talking about today for your metal ox is expansion and contraction. And this year we'll have elements of both. So that's a really important duality to consider because expansion is nice and big and bright and, and contraction comes in and neither are bad and neither are good. Both are just an awareness of what is. So when we are going within the flow of what is, we are very successful and we're not fighting against ourselves. So just understanding that this year will have both elements is very helpful as you as you transition into this new year. Um, so, and just an example in terms of like monetary success, like um, year of metal ox is metal and money and um, those things are associated with that. Um, so we had Elon Musk just purchase a whole bunch of cryptocurrency, Bitcoin for Tesla. And uh, that is an example of expansion into a monetary market. Yet this year is not good for gambling. So we'll see a lot of constriction and condensation and contraction in terms of those flows. So we won't see just an endless um, expansion. We'll also see a contrast. Um, with regard to social, we're going to see the same things. And not just because of the pandemic, but also because of the energy of the year. So what we do get to see, which is very exciting, is an expansion into more social times, which is lovely. But it's year of the ox, so it happens slowly. And a lot of it will happen around summer and fall. These are times uh, for year of the ox that are times of harvest. It's, a, it's an earth animal and it's a farming animal. So times of harvest are really important. So even if we didn't have a pandemic, we would still see times of expansion in summer and fall for social connection. Um, but these will also have elements of contraction within, which means that these will be like small groups, not huge groups, not a huge travel everywhere. Um, so, it, but we will have some joy in connection in small groups in this year. Um, and it fits with the year of the pandemic as well, because we're slowly opening up things to a little bit more careful expansion after people get vaccinated and that sort of thing. I uh, won't get into that, but um, okay, next slide, please. So the second key concept to describe besides five uh, yin and yang is five elements. And this slide does a great job of capturing a lot of correspondences all at once. So um, you can see here that um, it has all of the five elements, fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. And the most important thing to notice here, what we're going to talk about, is the generating cycle. So that is that little circle that goes to the right. So each element before helps to generate the element after. So fire, for example, helps to generate earth. Earth helps to generate metal. And in Chinese medicine, so there are 12 animals, and each animal um, has its own year. So in 12 years, the ox will come back again. But in the 12 years from now, the, the uh, element of the ox will not be metal any longer, it will be water. There's a progression. So um, it takes 60 years for us to return to the same animal and the same element that we had when we were born. So that's a marvelous thing, a 60 year cycle. It takes 60 years to get through all the elements and all the animals and back to the return. So 60 is a very special year in Chinese medicine. Okay, so um, what's really important this year is a focus on metal and earth, and those are on the bottom right-hand corner. Um, and earth generates metal. 
So metal corresponds to the lungs in Chinese medicine, and that helps disperse fluid to the skin. So we'll talk about that later in the health section of the talk. And earth corresponds to the spleen, the digestive organs, the pancreas, the stomach, um, all the digestive functions. Um, the spleen tea in Chinese medicine is responsible for transformation and transportation of fluids and phlegm and dampness. Um, and so that's gonna be very relevant for this year. These correspondences um, help us understand what's going on outside in the world and inside in our bodies. So for example, earth helps to generate metal. So if the digestion is weak, the lungs might also be weak. You might have a cough or phlegm or, or, uh, or an emotional component to, to the correspondence as well. So that's another interesting thing about Chinese medicine is that each of these elements and organs have an associated emotion and they have both negative and positive emotions. So the main emotion affiliated with year of the metal is grief. And um, that is something that a lot of people have had a lot of in this last year of the pandemic, a lot of constriction, a lot of time alone, a lot of time apart. Um, there's been a lot of things happening in the world. And um, some people might even wake up between the hours of three and five in the morning. That is a time associated with the lung and associated with grief. So if that does happen to you, then you might have some of these, these lung or grief issues coming up. Um, but the wonderful thing about five elements is that there's also a positive emotion associated to that. So the, the opposites, we're going, to do, we're going to take some time to facilitate today in today's talk. Um, really important, one of my medical Qigong teachers always said this, feelings are meant to be felt, not held on to. So when you feel them, they don't get stuck in the body. You feel them and you let them go and they pass and they don't stick inside the body and cause trouble. So for the healthiest start to this year's transition, you want to allow yourself to let go of any feelings of grief, any feelings of sadness or despair from this last year. In the last year or even in this moment, you might be feeling some grief. And so we're going to do a little exercise, a little uh, Qigong meditation exercise. And so to do this, I want you to like put your arms out straight in front of you. My arms are a little higher just to show you them, but you'll want them kind of resting easy and balanced. So visualize your ni arms nice and fluffy, like they're, they're resting on a cloud, really easy. And I want you to visualize the lung channel. I'm gonna show you where that goes. So there's um, lung one starts right here, at your axillary area, right next to your armpit, but outside of it. You can press it, it might even feel sore on some of you people. So this is lung one. And so this is the beginning of the channel. It extends from the lungs into this lung one point, comes out of the body and down this line right here, down through the thumb. So this is the lung channel that I want you to envision during this exercise. So let your arms be nice and easy and imagine this lung channel very open and free. So take a few breaths into your abdomen while your arms are resting on clouds, into your lower belly, below your belly button. Breathe in. This is the below your belly button is the area called the lower dantian, and that's the area of your source chi. Take some nice, easy breaths into your lower belly. and let your arms rest on the clouds. And just visualize this channel that starts in your axillary area and goes out through your thumbs. Visualize this channel opening up and letting go of anything that doesn't serve you. Letting go of old grief, letting go of new grief, just letting it pass through you and go out of your channel. You don't have to worry about the universe um, having negative chi in it, that will transform it for you. So just let go of any grief or any lung issues that are stuck in your lungs, out your lung channel. When we let go of old emotion, it frees up space for us to feel new positive emotion. The present moment is all we have and returning to a state of oneness and being 
opens up our lives to live our best selves. Living in the present moment does not mean that we cannot plan to execute our goals, but it means that we're in a state of awareness and oneness and being with this present moment, being with ourselves, being with our breath, being with our body, our mind, and our spirit as a whole. Being in the present moment helps us stay grounded and not be swayed by worries about the future or holding on to the past. So in this moment, just let go of anything that doesn't serve you. Let your lung channel open and drain any grief, any sadness you might feel. And when you're done, let your hands rest gently on your lap and take a final breath into your lower abdomen. Next slide, please. So now we'll get into actual characteristics of the ox specifically. The ox is a very slow, steady animal. Obviously, it's a farm animal. It helps with farming. Um, but it's a slow, steady animal. And so this year is going to be all about patience. When you have patience, you'll have a lot of success. You'll have um, steadfastness and stick to it and um, it will lead you to a great result in the end. People are really tired this year, tired of um, staying home, tired of political issues, tired of financial stressors. Um, but this is a slow year. So it has a lot of positive outcomes, but it's gonna be a slow build. So definitely watch for like summer and fall and things will change. But as we, as we shift into this mentality, um, be patient. Um, Earth is all about being grounded. So staying grounded and facilitating that positive energy uh, will help generate the, um, the healthy metal. So if you see that little graph, the five elements graph in the corner again, the healthy earth and staying grounded will help generate a healthy metal, healthy lungs for, and for healthy success for this year of the metal ox. Also understanding that duality of constriction that we talked about, expansion and constriction is really important um, in this year because we need to understand that we're gonna have to balance the hard work of the year of the ox with rest and recovery. So this year is a little bit about exhaustion and that's important because it's also about hard work and labor. So as you work hard, as you feel tired, make sure to rest and uh, take frequent, frequent breaks. So another interesting issue is that um, it's really helpful in this year to embrace personal responsibility. Um, so Lillian Bridges, she's a successful Chinese medical astrologer. She said that shoulders are all about standing upright and holding space for the lungs. So that's one of the activities we just did, creating space for the lungs. Um, and uprightness that we have when we take responsibility. So she said that personal responsibility is as important as efficiency in this year. Another key aspect that can help you to live your best self in the year of the ox is to create joy. So we're gonna do a little activity about that in a minute. Um, to create joy in your everyday life, even creating work that you love, that's really, really important. Ox are also very true to their ideals. Um, they're very honest and forthright. So this is a really good year to honor the ideals of the ox, which include socially gracious behavior, cooperation, and even beauty. Um, all right. Um, so next slide, please. So yang energy, which ox is a big, big yang animal, um, is motion. So it's really important this year to stay in motion. Um, it's even more important this year um, to focus on movement and exercise because there's no wood energy. So if you look at this uh, five element chart, wood is the green one and it's associated with the liver chi and that helps in moving chi in the whole body. There is no wood in this year. It's mostly earth and metal. And so we have to create that movement within ourselves, both by movement physically and by movement with action, taking action steps to achieve your highest good. Um, so that's really important to stay in motion, to create the movement that you need to prevent stagnation. This is also an excellent year to exhibit and foster those positive traits of the ox by uh, like diligence and dependability, determination, um, even an honesty and faithfulness, integrity, uh, staying consistent with like good socially conscious ideals. Um, this is a really the best year for your success to create a definitive plan about what you would like to achieve in your life and take detailed action steps 
by implying this tenacity. So you might not realize all of it by year of the end of year of the ox because it's a slow year, but you'll take all the steps and you'll follow through with building that highest success and highest goal for you. Good fortune follows hard work for year of the ox since the spirit of the ox is labor, but you also need to remember to rest and protect your health. Next slide, please. So that's a really key component in this uh, contrast between expansion and hard work and contraction and rest and recovery. So this is a great year to um, start regular med meditation practices. They don't have to be big. You can be three to five minutes. You can use some of the activities that we do in today's session later in your life, every day if you like. Um, and letting go of all the stress and tension that may uh, build up in a day. So as you work really hard, you want to make sure when you go home and rest that you let that go. Sort of the same as you let out all the grief, you can also let out all the stress of your nervous system. Ox often work really hard that sometimes they forget to devote enough time and attention to relaxation and healthy diet. So making sure that you um, don't work too hard by skipping meals, um, by working too hard or too much or too long. Um, another thing that can happen in this year is that issues of phlegm or cough can be increased because there's, the digestion is weaker. And the spleen chi is what helps in aid in digestion in Chinese medicine. So it helps in the transformation and transportation of the fluids. And so when the spleen chi is weak, it can't get those fluids as, um, to as many places as you want. And so that can uh, result in phlegm and stagnation, cough, um, skin issues. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But you want to pay very close attention to your diet this year and supporting your digestion. So this next slide will give you some tips to pay attention to that are very helpful. Um, so you want to especially pay attention to your intestinal health and your gut bacteria. And to do this, you can increase prebiotics, probiotics, have a lot of fiber in your diet. Um, you want to reduce the things that bad bacteria thrive on and that they eat and they proliferate on. So that's like gluten, carbs, processed sugars. Um, you can have rice pasta. You can have um, mung bean pasta. These are things that are without gluten, like wheat and uh, white flour. Um, taking digestive enzymes should really help support your digestive process. Um, and even eating uh, uh, pineapple and bromel uh, bromelin is a, the enzyme in pineapple and papaya. And so these are two um, great fruits. You want to have them fresh, though, because uh, canning or heating them or um, having them in another way um, denatures the protein, the, the uh, enzymes in it. Um, and so even frozen, they, they sometimes flash, free, flash, flash heat them before they freeze. Um, and that can, any kind of heat will denature the enzyme. So you want to have fresh so they still have those enzymes in them or you can take a d digestive enzyme supplement. You can use spices like turmeric and saffron in your cooking. Uh, one thing you'll notice maybe is that the little purple flower that was in your invitation is actually a saffron flower. So the little red threads in that flower are the little saffron that you harvest. And it's actually a tiny flower, but in the picture it's, a, it's enlarged quite a bit. Um, you can try golden milk and there's recipes, many recipes online. I recommend the non-dairy version like oat milk or something like that. Um, but so you can add the spices to that um, and that's very healthy for this year. Um, I'll draw your attention to the right. These are two book resources that are really great. Um, one is that um, Chinese astrologer that I just mentioned earlier. Um, she wrote Divine Ch Chinese Cuisine and it has over a hundred recipes that are uh, wonderful and that are consistent with ch uh, Chinese medicine diet techniques. Um, there's 70 that are vegan. They have no dairy or seafood or nuts. Um, a lot of things that people have issues with. It's really good for the digestion for this year. And then secondly, I'll show you Vegan Color Lifestyle. That was actually written by my cousin, Catherine Keeler. Um, and it's available as a, an ebook. Um, and so it has 25 vegan recipes that are, um, that are lovely and light and good for the digestion. So next slide, please. So uh, this picture is a picture of your nervous system. It's a very common picture. Um, so it shows you on the right-hand side what happens to your nervous system when you go into sympathetic mode. Um, that's fight or flight. Your, your um, eyes, your pupils dilate. Your, your um, heart rate goes up. You get ready to like fight a tiger. Um, and it diverts blood flow away from your digestion. So it's really important to acknowledge this when we're talking about eating with mindfulness because the opposite is the rest and digest side of things. So when you are calm and peaceful, 
you are able to divert blood flow to your digestive organs. And that not, is not just your stomach and your spleen and your pancreas, but it goes all the way from the salivary glands all the way down to your intestinal absorption of nutrients. And that is greatly enhanced by being peaceful in your body when you're eating. So it's a good thing this year, especially not to get too distracted when you're eating, not be on your phones or be in a work meeting, but actually take time off to eat and be feeling calm in your system. Um, the body also likes regular times to eat because then it can get ready um, for the, the process. It can create all of the digestive enzymes and the salivary response that pre-digest food before it even gets to your stomach. So if you're gonna eat at regular times, that's very good for this year especially because it allows your body to prepare the digestive processes to maximize your health. Oh, next slide, please. All right, so one of the things that presents some challenges this year is going to be the skin. Um, metal is about lungs, which uh, disperses fluids to the skin, and metal is also a year of dryness. So we usually we get dryness in the uh, fall, which is also metal time, year in the autumn, uh, so more dryness happens in the autumn and the fall. Um, but then we also have it, it being an earth year too, because it's earth animal, and earth represents phlegm. So we might have boils or acne and, and that sort of thing. So this slide shows you a couple things um, that will help you to take good, good care of your skin. And one is actually by my cousin. She has created an all natural line of vegan moisturizers, body butters, that sort of thing at Holistic Chakra Lifestyle. And Yina, which is um, a company created by a couple colleagues of mine that has a beautiful line of products that are based on Chinese medicine and have Chinese medicine herbs in them. Um, you'll also want to like to get good hydration uh, within and without, so externally and also getting a lot of water, tea, that sort of thing. Next slide, please. So what will success in this year look like? Everybody wants to know what will help them be successful. And these are some of the things that will help you be successful in Year of the Metal Ox. If you take solid direction and you plan well and you execute, you see through those tasks, you will do very well in this year. Um, you want to stay grounded and rest. That will also help your health. Um, and ox are all about cooperation and patience. So they like people. They're very peaceable, but they don't get thrown off by the opinions of others. So they'll stay true to their goal, regardless of what anyone might think. Um, and uh, the other thing that's gonna be so helpful to you this year in particular is facilitating positive emotions, the ones that counteract grief. So you want to uh, build up all the positive emotions that you can this year, like joy, cheerfulness, happiness, um, satisfaction, merriment, all the ant antonyms to grief. Um, we will do a little exercise for that in a moment. And you can also use this time to cultivate your relationships since this year is all about cooperation. Okay, next slide, please. As with any year and every year, there are always some animal signs that are resonating better or worse with a particular animal. So in this case, in Year of the Ox, the ox are most compatible with rat and snake and rooster. Um, in Chinese medicine and mythology, uh, the ox was said to actually help the, the rat and give the rat a ride. So I have this actually little tiny feng shui rat charm. Uh, and actually, it's, a, it's very good luck if you have a rat charm in this year because um, rats are very helpful to the ox and the ox and rat are friends that gave the, the rat a ride. But the rat tricked the ox um, but, and became the first animal by jumping off early. So that's why we had year of the rat last year and year of the ox this year, why the ox is only the second animal, not the first one. Um, but this, the two animals still remain friends and are very helpful to each other. Um, snake and rooster are also have a positive affinity with year of the ox. Next slide, please. Now in Chinese medicine terms, incompatibilities or difficult years usually meant hard work. So year of the ox is already about hard work, but these three animals may have to concentrate a bit more than other animals. If you were born in year of the goat, horse or dog, be patient with yourself, it's okay. Um, next year's year of the tiger will change. <laughs> next slide please. So one of the things that I did for this talk was to write and I Ching for the flow of this year. Now, um, some of you may not know what I Ching is about. Um, and what it means is it means a lot of changes in the translation. But there's also a book of the I Ching called the Book of Changes. 
Um, so if you don't like this one moment, this one day or this year, just wait because things will change. Um, Chinese New Year is all about this transition um, from year of the metal rat, which we just had, which is a silver metal rat, to year of the metal ox, which is a golden ox, um, year of the metal ox. And the full transition in Chinese medicine for a year, it usually takes two weeks. So today is the start of that two week transition. But one of the things that we'll notice in this two week transition is that it's a very slow, easy transition because ox is all about slowness and patience. And um, so it won't be a quick chaotic transition like the following year, year of the tiger. So there are many translations of the I Ching uh, which help with this uh, ancient divination method. Um, my friend makes I Ching sticks. So you'll see the picture on the right. Um, she has them available on Etsy if you like to do a reading for yourself. Um, if you want to learn more about that, you can always set up a private um, appointment with me. I can teach people or do questions for them. But you can also do that for yourself. Um, and uh, these sticks have the same odds as the ancient method, the yarrow sticks, um, and a kind of a wooden feeling to it. So I, I do like uh, this particular method for pulling the lines. Um, so once, once the question is asked, and the question I asked for this talk was, what is the flow of metal ox going to look like for year 2021? And the lines that I got are uh, pictured here, lake over water. So you don't need to know much about how to draw these lines or, or um, what they mean, but we, we have the image lake over water. Um, so the, the um, hexagram that we obtained is all about exhaustion or oppression. So um, that that's what we talked about. We had um, we need to rest and recover in this year. And there's constriction. So there's expansion and there's constriction. So we need to be mindful of those things in this year to be successful. Um, Metal Ox year will be about a light rain. So we have these water components, lake over water. They will have both warmth and coldness in it because of its nature. And so these lake and water trigrams, they match with the energy of, of rain for the year. And the image means that the lake has dried up. So we talked a little bit about dryness with the skin um, and a little bit about dryness with respect to the metal. So nourishment and um, healthy fluids needs to be addressed in this year. Um, its translation means inner exhaustion, but outer constriction. And we saw this earlier with the push and pull between expansion and constriction. But during any time of constriction, it always contains the seeds of renewal. Even at the darkest moment, just before the dawn, contains the light that's almost ready to emerge. So just as each new dawn emerges and each new season emerges, so will constriction transition into expansion. So not to worry. You have a choice about managing your inner tranquility during this time of duality. And contrast can also help you to appreciate the positive attributes of life as it emerges. My favorite translation of the I Ching is by Jack Balkan, and he writes, the world may oppress and exhaust you from without, but negative thinking oppresses and exhausts you from within. The only way to survive is to stay true to yourself and maintain an unswerving faith that things will in fact get better. A positive attitude is your greatest ally now. You must fight to maintain it. It's easy to be optimistic, when things are going really well. It's a true test of your character to remain full of faith and hope when everything seems to be falling apart. Yet this greatness of spirit will bring you through this difficult time and ensure your success in the long run. So what does that mean? It means that finding our joy, keeping up our morale will ultimately be what keeps us successful in Year of the Metal Ox. So Kuhn, this hexagram, is an image of a tree growing within an enclosure, and it offers us a lesson about remaining cheerful and abundant in the face of confining situations. Tranquility in disturbance is one of the Tao's greatest lessons to overcome the extremes of responses. Who can be patient until life returns us to the dance? Whatever unfolds might simply be a lesson to cultivate patience and to become less reactive. But be assured the dance will return, the joy can come. Rumi said, keep knocking, and the joy inside will eventually open a window to look out and see who is there. Allow this time of oppression to reveal the abundance within you. So how do we do that? I've created an exercise that facilitates the beneficial energy for success in Year of the Metal Ox. 
Next slide, please. So what brings you joy in the moment? Now you can get your pen and paper. I want you to just jot down a couple ideas that, that bring you joy right now. Joy doesn't have to be some big goal in the future. It can be as simple as like petting your cat or hugging your dog, um, seeing a smile on the face of your loved one, watching a sunset. Just jot down a couple of things that bring you joy, whether big or small. So this is a year where experiencing and creating joy will bring you great success and ease to your spirit. Um, you want to surround yourselves with beauty because this is a little bit about beauty this year. Have fresh flowers, wear metal jewelry that you like since you're a metal ox. Um, engage in beauty aspects like grooming, uh, wearing clothes that you enjoy. So we had a lot of uh, comfortable clothes in the year of COVID um, and, and pandemic, but um, you can still wear comfortable clothes, but wear clothes that bring you joy and happiness. Um, next slide, please. Now, some of you may have a hard time envisioning joy, and that's okay. What I, what I want to invite you to do is just acknowledge what's in your body, your soul, and your emotions right in this moment, without judgment, just with awareness. And ask yourself, what would cause joy for you in the future? So if you had trouble envisioning what helps you have joy, then write down three tangible steps what you could do to create some of that joy in the future. Do you like takeout? Maybe you can order takeout next weekend. Um, something tangible, a step towards that joy. And if you are having trouble, ask yourself, are you working upstream or trying to go against the flow of the universe? Remember, this will be a year of contraction and expansion, a duality. So we don't want to work against ourselves. So it's about hard work and rest and recovery. So we want to have that flow within us. If something negative came into your mind, consider a positive side to that stressor. Abraham said, what is the next best thought that you can think of? Something the next best thought if something negative came to mind. You might also consider has the difficult thing that you've been experiencing been preparing you for your highest good, making you stronger in some way? Is there an aspect about it for which you can feel grateful? Maybe you had some help from someone. Next slide, please. So we have the power to change our life and create the conditions we want to experience. If you want to have something that will create joy in the future, I invite you now to turn your awareness and your imagination into what it would feel like to you if you had what you wanted more than anything in the world, you already had your wildest dreams fulfilled. What would that feel like in your body, in your emotions, in your mind? What would it feel like to have the thing that you want most in the world? I invite you to share with us some of the feelings that come up for you. Um, you can click there on your screen. There's a little question mark. You can click on that and choose ask a question of organizer or staff and then use the space to jot down your comments, jot down some of the feelings that come up for you. So if you had the thing that you, you want most in the world, your wildest dreams, what would that feel like in your body? These are feelings that you can facilitate at any time. You don't need to have a million dollars to feel safe and secure. You can foster those feelings of safety and security and abundance in your body right now. And we'll, we'll do that in a moment. Do you crave love and connection? You can send yourself self-love and facilitate the emotions of connection in your heart in this moment, in this time. You get to choose what to focus your awareness on. And you can focus your mind, your body feelings, and your spirit. You can either choose to focus on the stressful or you can focus on the positive. Once you're aware of the moment, what's in this moment, you have a choice. So if you are interested in positive mantras and helpful tips to shifting this awareness for you, you might like this book, You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. And she also has a bunch of positive med meditations available online. Next slide, please. So next, our wonderful co-organizer, Adam Barr, who is making this webinar function and running all the lovely behind the scenes operations, is going to share some of the feelings that you wrote in. Thank you for your help, Adam. What are some of the feelings that people envisioned? At the moment, uh, no feelings have come through. I'm guessing uh -huh. that the question mark function may be leading to some technical difficulties. So I'm okay. guessing folks have their words with them. 
but mm -hmm. are not great. able yet to share them. Great, thank you so much, I appreciate you. All right, so if um, I'm going to use an example of security and abundance. So if you want to feel secure and abundant, you can create a mantra that um, I am abundant. I have infinite abundance. These are very simple three word mantras. So whatever is the feeling that you would like most in your life, you can, you can um, change that into a three word mantra, very simple, so that when you're meditating, it focuses your mind. So if your mind starts to wander, you can say, I choose health or I am healthy. If that's what you want most in your life. We had feelings of joy, relief, and softness. So I am joyful is a positive mantra for joy. Or I feel relief. Um, I have relief. Um, so you want to frame it in terms of something you already have so that you start to facilitate that energy for you more. Um, thank you very much uh, for the audience um, participating. So next slide, please. So now we're gonna take those feelings that you envisioned and you're going to foster that emotion within yourself in this moment. So I just invite you to again, go back to your breath into your lower abdomen. Breathing into your lower abdomen, your lower dantian, just below your belly button. Taking nice, easy breaths in and out. And I'd like you to imagine that your legs go nine feet deep into the earth. And that the bottom of your feet connect all the way down to the molten lava core of earth and back up again. And that with this connection to the earth, you actually can bring up earth energy into your body and into your lower dantian with every breath. And let go of anything that doesn't serve you out through your feet, the earth can transform it, it can handle it. And bringing in that beautiful earth energy to fill your dantian. And then send this energy from your lower belly up to your heart center, connecting with human. And then up to the top of your head, do 20 which connects with the universe. So now we're going to imagine and envision the universe chi, the sun and the moon and the stars, all that beautiful universe chi coming into our head, flooding ourselves with beautiful energy chi, universe energy, and combining with earth for balance and harmony. So we are meant to be balanced between heaven, human, and earth. And we're always meant to have access to this wonderful flow of energy from the heavens and from the earth and to have balance within. So now I invite you to imagine your chi bubble around you. For some of you that might not be familiar, it's about as big as your arms are wide. It's a huge bubble of protective space. And just imagine this bubble filled with that energy that you pulled in, that 100% pure source energy that keeps you safe, keeps you protected, wants your highest good for you. And now I invite you to turn your awareness to the emotion that, that you thought up, that feeling that you would have if you had the thing you wanted most. It was comfort, if it was joy, relief, softness, security, love. And let that emotion just fill your lower belly as you breathe in and out. And now imagine that emotion so big, it expands beyond you to your entire chi bubble. And contracts back into your body. Just like your diaphragm expands and contracts with every breath. That is a good match for this year, the expansion and contraction of just a simple breath. 
So it's always good in this year to just do simple breathing or breathing with the emotion that you want most in your life. Foster that free and easy, loving, hopeful, trusting, secure, or whatever feeling you imagined in your body. And you can take this feeling with you into the next moment, into the next day. And every day you wake up, you can foster this feeling or this emotion when you start your day, just three minutes or five minutes to start your day. So as I invite you to close, I'll direct your awareness back to your lower dantian, taking a final breath into your lower belly. Opening your eyes if you choose or feeling restful if you choose, it's all fine. Next slide, please. So as we come back into this present moment, I will talk a little bit about how gratefulness is very similar to joy and also helpful in, in healing your body, healing your brain. So it goes hand in hand and focusing on the things for which we feel grateful, beginning every day with gratefulness helps shift our focus from negative, the negative thoughts and it sets up a condition for a happier, healthier life. So there's been a lot of research on this and you'll see two books off to the right here, Neuroplasticity and Softwired that show how just doing gratefulness every day helps to heal your brain and create new neuron connections and just inundate your body with healthy chemicals. Um, and uh, Lillian Bridges, the Chinese astrologer, she said that gratitude is a very good metal emotion. So gratitude is also a very good emotion to combat grief of the year of metal. By focusing on gratitude every day, we help combat the more negative emotions that can be associated with metal, she said. So if you want to read more about gratefulness, how gratefulness affects neuroplasticity, you can check out those books. Next slide, please. All right, so today we have done a lot. Uh, We've explored some key features about Year of the Metal Ox. We have participated in some deep breathing. And we've dived into how meditating with feelings that create joy or gratefulness will set you up for optimal success in this year of the metal ox. Next slide, please. So as we conclude, I want to invite you to the next webinar, which will be on um, the uh, eve of the spring equinox. And that's about how the transition of um, the winter time transitions into spring and into liver energy. And as year of the ox will not have any wood energy, it's very important for us to generate that for ourselves using direction and planning and movement exercise. Um, so I just want to thank Adam Barr for his excellent help today and excellent assistance in co-organizing this event and doing all the slides for us and all the background work. I want to thank our participants who figured out the question mark and for who participated behind the scenes and wrote down your, your feelings of joy. Um, I just want to thank you so much for joining us today. I'm delighted that you're here. Um, and uh, in closing, I want to wish you peace and joy and abundance, merriment, love, happiness, and this easy flow into the transition of Year of the Ox. So as we close, I will just like we started, I will do the singing crystal bowl. And this and is, yeah. Before you start, I'll say uh -huh. to everybody present that the link for the next session will be emailed to you so that uh, you don't need to copy the, the, the link here. Uh, we'll send you an email that you can just click to register if you'd like for the next session. Yes, thank you. Uh, I will also post that on the website as well so you can find it later. Um, and uh, so this is um, a singing crystal bowl that's high heart chakra. So this is the energy of joy for you as we close. And as we close, you can listen to the sound and just take some easy deep breath and imagine that feeling of joy that you would have.
Thank you so very much and have a beautiful day. Bye. Take care.